let's make the first big commercial success in video games, Pong. And this was gonna be a five minute tutorial, but I failed. So instead it's gonna be around six minutes. So without further ado, let's get all the different art assets we're gonna to need to get this done. I'm gonna open up Microsoft Paint, go to Properties, and set the dimensions to 64 pixels by 64 pixels. I'm gonna save as, and that's it. And no, I'm not kidding. That's all we're gonna to need to make this entire game. So we'll make a new 2D project. And the first thing we wanna do is select on our camera and set the background to black. Let's right click and import our square we just made and drag that into the scene. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how quickly we can actually set up the scene. Here we go. We'll take our square and we'll call this ball. We can hit control D to duplicate it and we'll call this player one. We'll do it again and call this top wall. We'll do it again and call it player one goal. And so our ball can be set into the center. We'll move our player just over a little bit. Our top wall, same thing, we'll move it up. We want it to be like right at the top. So from here, we can kind of look at our position and set it to a nice even number. So we could do like zero and maybe five. And we'll increase the scale on the X axis to maybe like 30. Yep, that looks good. We can duplicate the top wall, call it bottom wall. And instead of five, we'll set negative five. Our player, we can expand out a little bit too, so maybe three in the Y scale. And same thing, we can set these to nice even numbers. We want it pushed up against the edge of the camera. It's around negative eight, so negative eight, zero. We'll set the tag to player. We have our player one goal, which we want outside of the camera. And we'll scale that to 15 or so. Looks pretty good. We'll duplicate the player one goal, call it player two goal. And instead of negative 10 in the X position, we'll just set it to 10. We'll select everything except the main camera and we'll add a component of Box Collider 2D. So if we disable our sprite render, we'll see our collision boxes set up. For our player one goal and player two goal, we want to set the collider to is trigger true. And for player one and the ball, we'll add another component of rigid body 2D and set the gravity scale to zero. I'll now duplicate player one and call this player two and inverse the position from negative eight to eight as well. Just to make it a little clearer, I'm gonna drag in another square here same deal, scale it up, and we'll scale the X down to maybe 0.25. Lastly, just to tidy things up, I'll create an empty game object and call this game field. I'll rename this to middle line, and I'll select the middle line and the two walls we have and drag it under the game field. This way it just groups them all together and we don't have to worry about it. And just like that, we have our entire level set up and ready to go. We just need to add some logic now to actually play the game. Let's first look at our player movement. We actually need to set up an input for our second player. So let's navigate to edit project settings, and this input tab. We could expand axes. You'll see that we actually have two different vertical inputs. So I'm just gonna delete this bottom one and we'll make a duplicate of this top one. So let's rename the duplicate to vertical two. And so for vertical, we'll say our negative button is S and our positive button is W with no alternative buttons. And for vertical two, we'll say negative button is down and positive button is up, which are the arrow keys. And same thing, no alternatives. We'll create a new C sharp script and we'll call this paddle and we'll select player one and two and drag the paddle onto it. And let me mark you through how the script works. We have a bool for is player one to distinguish between player one and two. We have a speed of how fast the player can move and a reference to the rigid body. And we'll use this private movement float to determine if we're moving up and down. So an update, we just wanna say if we're player one, then movement is equal to input dot get access raw of vertical. Otherwise we're player two, so we wanna get vertical two, which are those inputs we just set up. Then using our rigid body, we just wanna set the velocity equal to new vector two. We don't wanna move in the X, so I'm leaving velocity as is. You could also set this to zero. And then in the Y, movement time speed. Back in our editor on player one, we'll set is player one to true. We'll set the speed to five, and we'll drag in our rigid body into the public field. And for player two, we'll set the speed and do the same with the rigid body as player one. We should now be able to move up and down with W and S and with up and down. Now that we can move, we can worry about the ball. So I'll right click and create a new C sharp script for ball. Our ball needs a speed and a reference to the rigid body. I made this launch method where you'll set X and Y equal to negative one or one, and then set the velocity to that times the speed. We'll set up our ball script with the speed of five. And when we start, the ball should go in its own random direction. Really quickly, let's right click on our assets and create a new physics material 2D. Set friction to zero and bounciness to one. Click on our ball and assign the bounce material to the rigid body 2D. In the ball, freeze rotation Z. On player one and two, freeze position X and freeze rotation Z. This will make it so the ball bounces correctly. You're gonna right click, UI, Text Mesh Pro, Import Text Mesh Pro, Canvas, Scaled Screen Size 1920 by 1080. And I'll just set up these two Text Mesh Pro player scores. Let's create a game manager with a game manager script attached. This looks scary, but I made a game manager that basically has a reference to game objects. So you have ball, player one paddle and goal, player two paddle and goal, and the two score text we just made, as well as private integers for the score values themselves. 
When player one scores, we increase the score by one. We'll look for the component of Text Mesh Pro UGUI and set the text value equal to the score. On our game manager, make sure to just set up the references by dragging the correct game objects. On player one and two goal, we'll add this goal script. Similar to the paddle, we need a bool to see if this is the player one goal. And then in our on trigger enter 2D method, if we're colliding with the ball, so we'll have to set up a tag for the ball. So create a tag for the ball and assign it. So if we're colliding with the ball and it's player one goal, that means player two scored. And then we'll find the game manager, get the component of game manager and call player two scored. Otherwise we'll say player one scored. We can now increase our score when someone scores, but we can't reset the game. So in our paddle script, I made this new vector three start position. In our start function, we set start position equals to transform that position and make a reference. And then I made this public reset function where we stop moving and we set our position equal to the start position. I did the same for the ball, except I also launch after resetting the position and in our game manager, I made this reset position method that just basically tells the ball and the player one and two paddles to reset. And we call this after player one or player two score. When all said and done, you should now be able to play a game of Pong with a friend or yourself. How fun. I was going to show you how to add cool effects and sound effects and things like that, but quite frankly, I ran out of time. Sorry. Sorry.